Two of the powerhouses of New Zealand Rugby League go head to head this afternoon in the final of the New Zealand Rugby League Party Card Provincial Championship. Auckland and Canterbury have done battle over the decades and uh, none better than the clash two weeks ago in which the Cantabrians were able to secure a last minute victory. 36 to 30 over the Tamaki Makoto boys. Will that change today? Look out for the likes of Lima, and Mananui Te Hyokyo, Big Chris, Bam Bam Bamford. All of them going head to head against Heta, Jeremiah Pye and the Aucklanders as we come to the end of what has been a wonderful back end of the season in the Provincial Championship. It's Canterbury against Auckland, live from Mount Smart Stadium number two on a beautiful day for Rugby League. It's Iwi Whanui, no mai, hara mai, ki te whiringa tō whakataitai. NZRL Provincial Championship. Joining us from the sideline today to present the game is Talahi Maipi, tēnā koe e tēai. Tēnā koe e tēau, o si rā e te iwi whānui tēnā rawātu ko te katoa kua tauti mai kia whakāta Māori, te tūranga waiwai o te rī ki taketake i Aotearoa mō tēnei, te kemu whakamutunga, te whiringa toa o te whakataetai NZRL Provincial Premiership ki Wainganui i ngā mana nui o te tākaro nei ki Aotearoa a Tāmaki Makaurau me Waitaha. Ladies and gentlemen, it is absolutely fabulous to have you along for this. This is it, the grand final, the big one of the NZRL Barakat Provincial Premiership between the two powerhouses of New Zealand Rugby League, Auckland and Canterbury. And to join us here on sideline is our special guest commentator for today's big game, and that's Wairangi Kōpū e te rangatira tēnā rawa tūkoe. Kia ora koe, te ari. Wairangi, you've been involved with rugby league here with the Warriors for a long time. Now, you know as much as anybody about the rich, steep history and rivalry these two teams have over 100 years, and we see it again today in the grand final. That's right. I mean, these these two are uh, you know, the juggernauts of our provincial rugby league, and they've been playing each other for a long time. So they both know what's on stake today, and you know, they, they would have, you know, over, over playing each other for this season and, and previous seasons, they know... You know what each other's game is going to bring, and I ex expected to see a, a, a very, very physical clash out there today. Well, kia ora, wa, uh, tēnā rā wātū koe e wairangi, well, wa is familiar with a lot of the players that we'll see on display, the superstars of Provincial Rugby League here in Aotearoa. But let's have a look now to see how both of these teams made it to the grand final. First of all, Canterbury, who have dominated the competition from the start. The only team to go undefeated. As Whiting was saying, a tough game against Auckland two weeks ago, 36 to 30. They were lucky to get away with the win against Waikato, but they came home sick, strong in the second half, put 32 points on them. So they've got form also coming into this grand final. And Auckland as well. Well, they were... Everybody thought that they just steamroll their way through to the grand final, but it didn't end up that way with a surprise draw in round two. 30 all going to Wellington, and again, that tough loss going down to Canterbury in the last minute of the game. Good win against Taranaki, so also they've got a lot of confidence going into this game, which means a heck of a lot to both, both clubs. No reira e te iwi koe nga ngā tatauranga mo tēnei kemu, engari i tēnei wā tonu, koe te hiatu o amatau māngai toa i runga i a whakāta Māori, ko Tāwera Niko e ko Riroana ki te kaiako o te tīma o Waitaha. Kia ora Tāri, and joining me now is the coach of the Canterbury Bulls, uh, Brent Stewart. Shui, how's your uh, preparation been this week, mate? Yeah, no, we've, uh, we've worked uh, pretty hard this week. Um, worked a wee bit on our, def on our fringe defence, where uh, Auckland had a wee bit of success there last time against us, so we've tightened that area up, and uh, yeah, no, we're all looking forward to the day. Well, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, Good to see you guys in the final again, but uh, as you said, you played a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I noticed a couple of the standouts for your team uh, in the game last week. Yeah, um, you know, last week we, we started off uh, quite slow last week, but uh, if we can uh, carry on the way we played in the second half, I think we're uh, in, in for a great show today. But, uh, you know, we're playing in Auckland. It's always quite difficult up here, so, uh, yeah, but, but we're, we're here to give it a good old shake. Mate, I know um, it was a tough game the last time you guys actually played. Um, 
you got some standout players. Where do you think you're going to attack the Auckland side? Well, our, our, our front rows uh, were exceptional last week, so um, you know, like we're going to, you know, definitely got to start there with our, our front rows going forward. And in uh, the two centres that we lost last time we played Auckland are, are back, they've, they've fit again. So uh, you know, they, they're quality players as well. So uh, if our front rows can lead, lay a good platform for us, I'm sure our fringes will do their job. Mate, I'm sure they will, and uh, one of the toughest front rows ever to go around for the Kiwis, Brent Stewart. Uh, mate, good luck for today's game, and I uh, wish you all the best for the final, mate. Thanks a lot, T. Cheers. Cheers. Ai, tēnā rā atu koe e tāwera moera kōrero ki te kaiako o te team o Waitaha a Brent Stewart. Now, Stacey Jones is also one of our other expert commentators on stand uh, for today's big game, and he caught up with the head coach of the Auckland team, former Kiwi, Sam Pāna. Yeah, kia ora te uh, We're joined by the Auckland coach, Sam Panapa. Sammy, great day for football. It is, Stacey. Yeah, it's um, a hint of uh, rain last night, but I'm um, glad that the sun's come out for the boys, and I think it'll be a good fast track. Yeah, they got you last time down in Canterbury, but uh, you're back here at home. Um, hopefully the, the home support will get behind you. Yeah, that's right. A little bit of vengeance, you know, won't, uh, won't harm the boys. Um, uh, the, the support for the, uh, of our home ground, and... Um, and the way the boys prepared this week, you know, has been, um, the game has been in the back of their mind. Yeah, Canterbury have dominated this competition so far, but I feel you guys are, are probably going to be the favourites here at home. Any players in particular to look out for in the Canterbury team? Yeah, I think uh, the, the halfback, you know, uh, Winita, he, he played very good, and the fullback. Um, but across the field, you know, they work well as a team. Um, and we've, you know, we've looked at that from our previous game. So I'm looking for a really uh, another good encounter again. So. Well, good luck today, Sam. Thanks, Stace. Ai koe nga whakaaro o Sam Pānapa pa mō tēnei tukinga, engari kia hua tui nāne ki a koe e hua o whakaaro mō tēnei tukinga. He hanga mō mō mahere ka kite mai i a kapa. Ah, kore kore o tēnei he rā tino rau e tēnei ki te tākoro o Whitsiporo. Te aho o tango o te hua rere i tēnei rā. Me ki, kei te ahua kimi Wikitoria a tāma ki Makaurei, te mōhi o rātou. I hinga rātou ki tēnei kapa Canterbury i tērā atsiunga sukinga no rera. Kaore e kore he kemu i tino nui tēnei. Te kā tāu e hua i te mea koe nei. Te whiringa tō o te whakatāetai NZRL Bata Ka Provincial Premiership. It's been 15 years before they've crowned the provincial champion. At the end of this game, we'll find out who will be the dominant force in Aotearoa Rugby League. E te iwi kia moutonu mai kā rewa tēnei tuki ngā nui whakaharahara, muri tonu i ngā whakatairanga e whaiake nei. Very smart, very smart. What are they say? <coughs> Thank you. And um, team first, which team list first? Well, you've you got backs then forwards, haven't you? Both. Okay. I'll do the backs, you do the forwards, you do the reserves, yeah? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah.
Kia ora no whanau. Welcome back. This is Mount Smart Stadium number two. It's a glorious day in Tamaki Makoto for the final of the Premiership. And of course, a six week window at the back end of the season has found favour with the six provinces involved. And we've seen some really great improvements. Tawara, uh, just uh, a chance to acknowledge the Bay of Plenty, who, whilst uh, they didn't win too many, they certainly pushed a couple of the more favoured teams uh, very well under Graham Lyon. Yeah, certainly it was great to see that the Bay of Plenty have come back in rugby, also Waikato and Taranaki. Good to see those uh, smaller provinces actually playing in this competition, which does make the standard a lot higher for those teams. And Stace, uh, I suppose all leagues across the country a little flat today after last night's loss by the Warriors but there's a strong performance from Andy and I think the Warriors we can be very proud of uh, what they've done in 08. Oh most certainly yeah this uh, last couple of weeks has been a, a joy to be a be a part of league in this country uh, not only the Warriors uh, first grade got uh, beat but uh, the under 20s got beaten right at the last minute there so uh, a little bit flat like you said Dale today for, to be a, a league fan but uh, we've got the final here. And uh, let's have a look at the uh, squads too that will be turning out today. We start off with the uh, the back, Sarang and Tamakaha, uh, Leka, the two Harold brothers, Awatangi and Wenati for the Cantabrians. Uh, Ulu Iwane is at the back today in number one. Laisini, Hafuka, Tongia, Tikino, Pai and Heta. That's a pretty impressive back line. Yeah, it certainly is some impressive backs here, like you said, Dale. And uh, looking through to the forwards for the teams uh, coming up right here. Timor, Sherlock, Tudi. Bam, bam, Bamford stand out last week to Hugh Hugh and also Johnny Limmer. Watch for him, plenty of work in there. Wade McDade, Ekeroma, King, Palatasali Ali. Watch him on the fringes. He is devastating in Tolson Kid and Harry Aonga rounds out the forwards. Yeah, and on the bench for uh, for Canterbury, Walker, Smith, Ferris and Lecker. And for uh, Auckland, Godine, Matangi, Neil and the experienced uh, Tui Samoa. Well, sadly, our rugby league fraternity across the country have lost two real stalwarts in the past week. And, uh, of course, I'm talking about Joe Gwynn, who uh, has been sent off by uh, a wonderful gathering of league lovers, and in Taranaki to Joe Nucky. And uh, we're just about to have a moment's silence to acknowledge the input both men have had to the code over many decades. Joe Gwynn and Jack Nucky. So a touching moment there for two really uh, wonderful men who have really given their all to the uh, game of rugby league. Of course, Joe Gwynn and Jack Nucky, you're at Joe's Tangi uh, uh, Tawara. And of course, uh, a man you had plenty to do with as well. Yeah, certainly was a big influence on my earlier career at Otahu. And then for one of the selectors as a Kiwis, it's always good having some of your whanau as a selector because they can pick you in the team. So big mihi out to Betty and all uh, the whanau, Clayton, Joe and uh, Daryl and uh, all his mokos too, Bronson Harrison. Uh, one of Joe's uh, Muckles, so he was back with the Tangi also. So Good to see he's uh, picked up a contract too, Bronson, with Canberra uh, from the West Tigers. <coughs> and uh, Joe Gwynn, you have much to do with him yourself, Stace, over the years? No, I didn't, but Joe. I knew uh, Joe, um, you know, through the Auckland League circles, and, yeah, very sad loss uh, for league, for, for t t the loss of Joe and also Jack Nucky down in Taranaki. Well, it's the Provincial Championship final. Glad you could join us on Māori Television, bringing you more of the local game than anyone else. And uh, uh, thanks very much to Jim Mather and the team at Māori Television for bringing us the uh, footy over the past five weeks. We're down to the wire now. This is it. As you can see, the, uh, the field is uh, a little dusty on top. And we should be in for a ding-dong battle here this afternoon. Wherever you are, ahakonuhe akutu. Hope you enjoy the action here. Canterbury at Auckland in the final of the Vatican Provincial Premiership. We saw uh, Bamford play such brilliant football over the past few weeks. We've been down in, uh, in Auto Tucky. He'll have to step up even again today. Yeah, as Brent Stewart said in the early live telecast when we spoke to him, uh, looking for his forwards to lay some good foundation. And if they get the ball to their centres and wingers, they've got some speed on the outside. Uluwi 
puts it uh, down behind him. Tati Maipi is looking after the sideline for us. And at this time of day and the way the field lies, I guess the sun can be a factor in the eyes of some of the the boys at the back. Tati, what's the uh, ground conditions and wind factor like today? Yeah, the wind factor is definitely favouring the Canterbury side at the moment. It's not a gustly breeze, but it is something that will help out the long kicking game. And it is a pretty bright day. There's a little bit of cloud up in the sky. But, uh, yeah, Bomb should test the, both uh, full-backs and wingers uh, looking to gobble up the ball on the full but in terms of the actual pitch itself it's quite sandy as well but other than that those are just little minor minor things because it's an absolutely beautiful day down here in Auckland and great conditions for rugby league. Tenaka, nice job last night for the boys too Tawana and, uh, and Tahi back from the Cameron fight down in Autotahi where he was successful although he very much tested by the American veteran Smith. Good coverage, though, once again, of the uh, the fight game. But we're into one big fight here. It's a fight for provincial supremacy. 20 metres out, Canterbury tackled with the ball as their number five, Scott Hurrell. Yeah, the, uh, sorry, sorry to, uh, yeah, it's a pretty tidy start from both teams, uh, just completing their sets and, and getting to their kicks. So uh, it's, they're both just sort of testing each other out, getting into that arm wrestle. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the Fords dominate in this game if Canterbury can get away uh, to a good start. They had a slow start last week against Waikato, and I know Brent Stewart really wants his Fords to rev right up and get stuck into the Auckland boys as soon as they can. Dawson Kidd, though, King doing strong defensive work. Canterbury decided to kick early, taken at the back there by Ului Oane, lets it go. He'll take it just a couple out from his own line. And the traditional hoops, of course, many still uh, remember Auckland with the blue with the white V. Dummy half run here. The tackle is made by the number four, Ben Hurrell. Just short of the 30 metres and about five in from the broadcast side here of Mount Smart 2. The darting run comes from somebody to half hooker. This is the young man who stepped into fullback two weeks ago when the Aucklanders were beaten in the last minute. A chip kick and half hooker claimed it, but then was steamrolled by, I think, by Big Mananui to Hell Hill and uh, a try scored 36 30 result. Well, there we go. First penalty of the game. Leon Williamson, the referee today. Let's hope we can be consistent. Has been one of our better referees in the NZRL Premiership. And uh, great to see him doing a good job. First penalty goes to the Auckland side. There we go. It's Harry Aonga who takes it forward now. Is put away about uh, five metres inside. The Canterbury half plays it back to a Kidoma. Will he hit it? Playing number seven today, but be uh, a little more comfortable. One suspects it's six, but he's got Jeremiah Pye there as well, who's uh, very experienced, got a good kicking game. So the two of them should be able to dominate around the ruck if they can get plenty of ball. Yeah, certainly uh, they have got experience in the halves and, and Jeremiah Pye and, and Willie Hitter was probably a downfall for them when they went down to Canterbury and, and lost that game. They didn't really take control of the game, the, the, the Auckland halves then, and uh, they just got to be patient here. Uh, you see a drop ball there from from the Auckland team, uh, they just got to cut these sort of little mistakes out and, and I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll win this game if, if they play good control football. But Willie Hitt is one of the uh, sort of, well, he's got plenty of guile and uh, unpredictable type of footballer. He's uh, got a little bit of magic in his hands at times. I saw him last week in the Fox Memorial final here and when he played for Tahuhu against Mount Albert. And uh, he was nothing short of superb in a losing team. They went down by two to the Tahuhu Leopards. Well, there we see a grapple tackle indicated there. Being all the rage in Australia the last couple of weeks, the Melbourne Storm has suffered for their captain being suspended, a $50,000 fine. Let's hope that doesn't happen here in New Zealand. Well, I don't think any club's got 50 grand over here in New Zealand, but... You know what Melbourne do, though, T.A., they're cheats. <laughs> oh, mate, just because they're in the grand final. There's Alex Timor, of course, told will be over there next week. I, I've got to congratulate them. I think they've been, uh, in fact, the two best teams of the year, really, going, uh, going into battle next week. Now, dummy half. Nathan Sherlock had an outstanding game last week. Works it through the short side. Picks up uh, to Hill Hill. That's him now. Flung to ground. 12 out from the line as they start to increase momentum. Quick play. The ball needed. Nathan Sherlock's got it. Wheels it out to Wenity. Couriers it across. Now it's into Arlinga who comes in from the back. Numbers on the far side. The big number three lays it back. But no red jersey. Only a blue one who eventually is pushed towards the sideline. Oh, yeah. Unlucky there for Casey Licker. The big striding centre went through it right on the fringes. Uh, he threw the ball back in the inside. Let's have a look at the replay. The ball comes out, out to the halves, get across. Nice ball on the outside, gets through the tackle, tries to pop it back on the inside. And uh, I think Jeremiah Pye gets taken over touch, so Canterbury will get the head and feed to the scrum. Yeah, Canterbury get the ball back from the scrum, but uh, yeah, Casey Lecker probably should have held on to that ball and, and set up for the next play. 
Coming up to six minutes of play, gone. Head up time. This is again Casey Lecker. He's been strong. We'll play it five out from the line. Great chance for Canterbury now. The Bulls line up. Numbering up as Bamford takes it from dummy half and a little dummy play with Sherlock. Five to the right-hand side of the post. They get themselves set. Here's the chance they've been after as Wienerty takes first receipts, but uh, nowhere to go. Thompson Caird is there. Closes him down again, as you can see, just five short of the try line. First receiver is Aranga, who's been uh, exceptional across the uh, six-week window of provincial play. Six out from the line. 10 in from the northern touchline. First receiver is Almatangi. Almatangi looks and finds Alex Timor. Timor eventually claimed at the back by the Uluwiwane. And will play it five out from the line. Still plenty of pressure on as Winnetty gets the ball. He looks for the grubber kick. Overrunning the grubber on the far side is the number three lacquer. And Auckland come up with the ball. The danger subsides. Yeah, poor start to that set for the Bulls. They had three or four wasted tackles trying to go from dummy half and pretty flat on attack. But once again, good pressure from the Auckland side in defence, Stace. Yeah, certainly, yeah. They defended really well, their, their trial on the, the Auckland team. But just looking at the uh, Canterbury team, uh, Alex Timo sort of went through there fairly easy. If, if a couple of Canterbury players can push up with him, they'll get some joy there today. Tell you one man to look out for is Yoni Tongia. I've been uh, pleased to have watched his career develop since he was just a youngster and uh, he's the number four for Auckland. Plenty strong and he's uh, got a great fend as well. Now the tackle is made. Auckland will get up and play the ball through their 13. Harry Aonga will play it on the 40 metre line. Willie Hetter decides to get a kick in. He was pressured into doing so. Taken by Wenerty confidently. Then it's a cross now to Aranga and the, uh, the chase is on. Aranga put away 32 out from the line. Yeah, good set there from Auckland. Probably the kick wasn't ideal. It held up in the win there, so it must be favouring the, the Canterbury team. But just looking at the end goals too, guys, uh, you know, I don't think you're going to see too many repeat sets today because they are very short in goals. You'd uh, fancy yourself to be able to drop it in there, there yourself, Stace, I suspect. And uh, let's go sign on with Tana. He might be uh, TA, nearly uh, eight minutes gone here. Oh, for Carnal. E wha, ahua wheri wheri ana, te ahua nei o ngā kapa e rua i tā rātou tīmatanga i te kemu, engari wairangi, o whakaaro mō te tīmatanga o tēnei kemu, e wha? Thanks, uh, Tānahi, as we see Noma Tangi come through. A, a try-saving tackle as it eventuated there for the number one, but then there's a knock-on. Back to you, Tānahi. Ah, uh, kia ora, Tānahi, kia ora, boys. E kāore, e kore. Okay, the kid in Mato, a canary, Tsuno Angana, Kitene, Kemu, Mohane Rata, Kotene, the Kemu, Unga, Kemu, Natakia, Atari, Jimataka, Tone, Nine, Corino, Rata, Kokitori, Tene, Fakatai, Norea, Hemia Nui, Kiarata, Kiafaka, Kiakopi, Tene, Kemu. I took a tow away. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how Canterbury are going, but a great break there by uh, the number six. Amatangi went straight through the Auckland defensive line. No support there, knocked the ball on when he tried to get up to play it. So, geez, they're making a few uh, gaps uh, through the middle of the Auckland defence. And Sammy Panapa needs to get a message out there to his boys to be nice and tight around the middle of that ruck. As Monty Tikino makes the run and will play the ball just short of the 40. And the awards... Uh, uh, last night for his club, Otahu Leverts, and uh, up to play it now, Auckland. On the halfway line, out of dummy half goes Ekonoma, but no way through as his run is, is immediately halted by Alex Timor. He's looking to uh, to get some shape in the sets of six, far side of the field, good run, powerhouse run too. This is the big number 11, Ali. He'll play the ball 22 from the line. Auckland with their first chance. Still no law as we approach the 10 minute mark. Songi Sione Tongia. Tackled by Bamford. Plays it now 15 from the line. First ball is to Pai. Pai the cutout picks up away to McDade. McDade now will play it. Center field right in front of the post. Options both sides. Pai takes it from dummy half. Will he be able to wrestle his way through? Flicks the ball up on the inside. Gets it back to Ilu Iwane. And Iwane. Struggling for the line, and Johnny Limmer comes in to help out Johnny Aranga. And they eventually put the Auckland fullback to ground five from the line. Fed out now to Heta. Heta gets a good ball. Still alive, still alive. Auckland for a last dash at the line. Come up just short for the final tackle now. First receiver is Willie Heta. He put the grubber kick to the end goal. Stace was saying just how short they are, and indeed it does uh, beat him into, into the dead ball. And a restart on the 20. 
Yeah, a bit of a disappointing end there to Auckland, uh, like I said before, that the end goals are very short, so you've got to probably not put as too much pressure when you kick these uh, balls in, into that goal and trying to get a repeat set. Well, looking at the completion rates, four out of six for the Canterbury side and five out of seven for the Auckland side. Just interesting to note there, the Auckland side just look a bit out of sorts and shape there, Stacey, going for attack a couple of times, they just, you know, look a little bit disjointed. Yeah, this is uh, certainly where the halves got to dominate this part of the field. Uh, look, like I said before, you just got to be a bit patient and, and it'll come, but having good shape, that, that creates pressure on the opposition team. Well, both teams enjoying similar rates of possession, fairly even. Likewise with uh, tackles made, but a penalty now going the way of the Bulls. And Kitamihi uh, Kinga uh, Tautoko Ropu for their team down there in, uh, in Ototahi. It's been great being down there for the last couple of weeks, actually, hosted by the uh, Canterbury Rugby League fraternity. And, uh, good staunch people. Of course, the team, uh, well, rep teams across the board and the club well represented. The Linwood Kears, of course, the defending premiers from the club competition. Head up time there, it's Ross Tutti. He's been strong. Tutti will play it now for Sherlock. Sherlock on the 10 metre line. First receiver is Alma Tangi. Jeremiah Pye is there to shut down any problems along with Bo King. Now to play it is Alma Tangi. Here he is, Bamford. Hard to stop, the big guy looks for the spin towards the line. Comes up just a metre short. He'll play it on the far side of the field. Five in from touch. Omatangi first receiver to Wenity. Wenity under pressure. And eventually he too succumbs on the 20 metre line. Short side run. Sherlock first receiver now. Leaving it behind his limit. Gone backwards, says Leon Williamson. Then the kick bounces off Lysini. And then into touch. Accidental offside, not play that, says Leon Williamson. Well, just another pull into the set there. They sort of went from one side to the other. Really not really knowing that was the last tackle. The kick should have been put on there, a bit of pressure. So both sides just a little bit out of sorts, still feeling each other out. And I just think uh, big Bam Bam Bamford should be getting in the middle of the ruck. He's hanging in the fringes on the centres. He wants to be just powering straight off the dummy half. Yeah, big chance of the Bulls now. And a little short pass to Alma Tangi. Tongia is there. Alma Tangi lays it down. That's gone backwards. And on the first tackle, a turnover. I'm sure their coach, Brent Stewart, and of course Dave Perkins, the assistant coach, won't be too happy with that form on the first tackle stage. Yeah, certainly, yeah. Just getting back to what T said about Bamford. Yeah, he does look like he wants to target the, the smaller guys in the Auckland team. But, yeah, another mistake there from uh, the Canterbury team. And, and uh, Auckland will get this feed here and look to get down the other end of the field. Auckland with possession now and working away from their danger zone. The tackle is made by the man at the back who continues to impress hard on it. Out of dummy half, Heta. Ben Hurrell was there to halt his progress, as is Alex Timor. Centre field 25 now, Auckland. Dalton Caird with the ball. Can find no way through. Both teams really just uh, cut that out. sussing each other out at the moment. Jeremiah Pye, first receiver, cut out ball to Tongia. Tongia now, this is the one of the men I told, uh, told you to keep an eye on. Gets the ball on the far side away and picks up Tiki No. Muni will play the ball now, 15 from the line. Referee Williamson signals. Cut out ball, still with Heta, got the numbers to Ioane. Short side left behind, scooped on by Canterbury, but the referee says never back to 10. Yeah, there it goes, Leon.